Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I want to show you guys how you can work with modular UI so that you can make widgets that you can reuse in other widgets without having to make custom elements per widget each time and copy pasting them. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to make some core widget you can also call it a base widget and in this example it's going to be a button and then I'm going to show you how you can make this base button and reuse that throughout your entire project and how you can make certain parameters in this button exposed so that you can change them from within another widget. So let's go ahead and set that up. So what I got over here is a blank project with an empty map. So I call this an example level. And then inside of the example level, I got some logic to set up our widget blueprint main menu. All I did is create a widget and I called it main menu. And as you see, it has nothing in here yet. So the only thing that we then do is that inside of the example level, you go to the level blueprint. And then so far I have added the widget to the viewport. So to do that, you type get player controller and then you type in create widgets then you select the widget the main menu and then you drag off of here and you type in add to viewport and then after that drag off of your player controller reference again and set show mouse cursor to true so type here set show mouse cursor and put it to true all right so um, if you have, for example, a main menu, then obviously inside of a main menu, you would have something like a canvas panel, and then you perhaps would have some text, and that text could say something like main menu. Uh, and then inside of a main menu, you might have buttons here. That's very typical. So one could say host game, one could say find game, one could say settings, and one could say quit. Now, what you could do and what uh, most beginners in our engine would probably do is that they would simply inside of this widget blueprint main menu, drag in a button and then start to stylize it. So, so they would basically set up normal, hoovered, pressed and disabled uh, with their own images and stuff in here. They would set up like a sound when you click it, etc., etc. And then they would also drag some text in here. And then basically they would probably select that button, size it to the content and style it the way they like it. So this could then say, host games just uh, just as an example right and then they would copy paste this button here and do the same over again and then if they want to change on the last button on the quit button if they want to change the font size to something smaller they would also manually do that over here and then if they click the button so if you select the button they would then code all of the unclicked events simply inside of the graph over here off of this unclicked event on that custom button here but uh, what i want to teach you here is how to do this in a modular way so that you have to style your button once how you can then basically parameterize certain of these elements such as the text and the color here for example and how you can forward on click events so that you have to work with one main base button throughout your whole project and then you can also use this concept for other ui as well so to do this let's go ahead delete this button and set one up so we're going to do widget blueprint user widget and then here we're going to type wb which stands for widget blueprint and let's call this our base button and then inside of the base button we see that there's nothing in here yet so the first thing we're going to do is drag in a button and then we're going to double click it and rename it to simply say button and we're going to put some text in here and obviously you see that this is very big right now but then if you click here on fill screen and desired then you see what the actual size of the button will be on your screen so the first thing that we want to do is that we want to have this text be modular uh, so what i mean by that is uh, well we're going to make it a variable so that in runtime we can set the actual content of the text and the size of it from this widget instead of doing it in here so the first thing that we want to do is that this text is something that we want to be able to change on this button so let's call this button text underscore text and then we make this a variable uh, and then uh, let's go directly to the graph now and show you how you can make this modular so drag in your text and then drag off of it and say set text and then here we can set the text. Now you can do this on event construct. That means that you set the text whenever you hit play. You can also do it on event pre-construct, which means that it happens when you click compile and then you can already see the change here. So if right now I hit compile, we set the button text to empty and then this text over here will change. So look, I click compile, save, and then it's empty. So that's the text that we want to change in runtime, but we want to change it from wherever we implement this base button or this base UI element and uh, just understand this is just an example right so you, if you understand this concept you, you you can apply this to your entire project so let's go ahead and 
drag off of this text and promote it. And then we're going to call this the button text. And then we're going to compile it and set the default value in here. So let's all call this button text is our default value. And then right now, in order to make it modular, we have to click here on instance editable and exposed on spawn. And as soon as we did that, we see that now inside of the main menu widget, we can drag in this button. So if you scroll all the way down, we can drag in this base button over here and you can drag in another one. And then we see that if we select these buttons, well, first of all, it's only one little element here inside of this hierarchy panel right now. So it's no longer your whole button with your text inside of it and perhaps an image. No, it's just this neat single element here. And then you see that this one, you can now click it. And because we made that one parameter exposed on spawn and instance editable, uh, we can now adjust the text here off of this button in runtime. So we can have this guy say host game, and then you see that it changes in runtime and that's because we hook it up to pre-construct. And then this one we can say find game games. So you see that this is already modular right now. And now, uh, yeah, you want to, for instance, do more stuff. So you want to want to have more parameters in here. So you can also click on the button and then, for example, say, let's say that we want to change the font size as well. So basically, you have to think to yourself, what are the parameters that I want to be able to adjust on this base class? And those you need to basically uh, expose on spawn and make instance editable. So right now, let's do font size. So the size over here. So we're just going to drag in the button text again, and we're going to say set font. And then we get this little function in Unreal, and then we can drag off here. We can make a slate info. And this is the info that already pops up for us when we select the text over here. So now we can adjust all of this text in uh, from within other widgets as well when we make this variables exposed on spawn and instance editable. So for example, uh, well, first of all, we need to set the font family. So let's select Roboto. If it doesn't show up, click here, engine content Roboto. And then we want to make this font size here modular. So right click promote variable and let's call this font size. And then here we can click on instance editable and exposed on spawn, hit compile, save. And you see that by default it's set to 24. So because we did this right now, because this one has now got this little I and so does this one. Now we see that over here, we can also adjust the font size as an extra parameter. So we could make this guy a little bit smaller. So we can make this guy 16 and this guy be 24. And you can go on and on like this. And uh, this is basically how you can make modular UI. So now instead of having a million custom buttons inside of all of your widgets, you only have your base button to work with. And then you just use that one inside of your widgets. And then you can make sure that all of your styling is extremely streamlined. Because if you once style this class, then all of your classes will neatly be streamlined with the same style as the base class. So. That is very handy to use. I use it myself in all of my projects this way. And uh, yeah, you can always uh, select this button here and then rename it to uh, give it a name that is more clear. So this will be our host game button. And this one over here would be our find games button. And then obviously you want to be able to click this button and then code it. So uh, previously you would just drag in a button, you would scroll down and do on clicked and you would get an event and then you can code your logic. So how do you do that for these guys that are modular? Well, you go back inside of the base button and then essentially what you have to do is that you have to forward the clicked event that is existing on this button. So if you scroll all the way down, you see on clicked. So first of all, click that to get it here inside of the graph. And then what we want to do is, yeah, we want to forward this. So the way to do that is with an event dispatcher. We basically dispatch an event. And the event that we want to dispatch is the button click. So let's create one and then give it a logical name. So we'll call it something like on clicked, because that's what this is. And now we can forward on clicked by dragging it in and then clicking on call. So basically what this does is forwards the clicked event. It dispatches it. That's what it means. So when we click this guy, we send a, a message to whoever implemented this widget that it has been clicked. And now what you will see is if you now go back here to the main menu widget and click on your own self-made custom base button, then you see that if you select it, scroll all the way down, that your on clicked event appears over here. And you can do that with other things as well. So if you select your actual button here again, so back inside of the base button, you can also say on hoovered, right? So if we want to forward this guy too, well, you guessed it, you can simply call on 
uh, hoovered. Boom. And then you could say on hoovered. Boom. Go in here. Boom. And then compile. Save. Go back here. And now you'll see on clicked and on hoovered appeared. And because these are now here, we can now say, okay, on clicked, we want to do this. And then for find games, we also want to do an on clicked event. And then we can say, uh, well, that now you can code your custom logic here and still make use of your base button that has one and the same similar beautiful styling. So that's it, guys, for this tutorial. Uh, I can show you with a print string that it works. So here we can do a host game. And then when we click the find games, we want to show find games. And then if I hit play, we'll see the two buttons. So it says host games and it says find games. All right, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. Also, be sure to check out our Patreon. You can download an awesome example project there, which is uh, full of multiplayer features and functionality. Also, please be sure to check out our Unreal Engine Marketplace. We make beautiful multiplayer, full multiplayer templates. So if you're interested in that and interested in speeding up your Unreal Engine development journey, then be sure to go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh,